Hello everyone, welcome to Biomechanics class. Today we'll be discussing about kinetics. So what is kinetics? Kinetics is the branch of classical mechanics that is concerned with the relationship between motion and its causes, specifically forces and torques. So the motion is created in the cervical vertebral column, but the cause for the motion has to be a force. So there are different types of force, which is compressive force, distractive force, shearing force, torque, etc. First, let, let us discuss about the forces generated by the ligaments. The ligaments force are responsible for stabilization. So first ligament that we would like to discuss about is transverse ligament of atlas. So you can see here just behind the dense of the axis. So this transverse ligament prevents the posterior translation of the dense and the anterior translation of the atlas. So this stabilizes the atlanto axial joint. Next ligament is called as alar ligament. It has two leaf of alar ligament, one centimeter in length bilaterally. You can see here two leaf, which is around one centimeter in length bilaterally. It prevents the it, it generates force that prevents the excess axial rotation at the atlanto axial joint. Next ligament is called as tectorial membrane, which is the other name for posterior longitudinal ligament in the vertebral column. So, tectorial membrane or posterior longitudinal ligament is situated just posterior to the body of the vertebra, posterior to the body of the vertebra. It generates force which prevents the excessive flexion of the vertebral spine. Next is anterior longitudinal ligament which is situated anterior to the vertebral spine and it generates force which prevents the excessive extension of the vertebral spine. We have capsular ligament which covers the uh, facet joint or the apophyseal joint and it generates force which prevents excessive sliding of the facet joint. Ligamentum flavum is situated between the lamina of the vertebral spine, between the superior lamina, superior vertebral lamina and the inferior vertebral lamina. It prevents, it generates force which prevents the excessive flexion as well as lateral flexion. Interspinous ligament it is situated between the spinous process of the superior vertebra and the inferior vertebra. It generates force which prevents excessive flexion. Next important ligament is the ligamentum nuke, which is uh, very prominent for cervical vertebra. Ligamentum nuke is also called as supraspinous ligament. That is, it travels to the tip of the spinous process and gets attached to the uh, nuchal line and the occipital protuberance. It generates force which prevents excessive flexion. Another ligament is called as intertransverse ligament. It is placed between the transverse process of the superior vertebra and inferior vertebra. It generates force which prevents the excessive side flexion. The tenth ligament is the apical ligament. You can see the apical ligament here, which connects the axis that is from the tip of the dens and the occiput. So it generates force and prevents flexion at the atlanto occipital joint. Coming to osteokinetics, that is the static loading at cervical spine or the forces loading at the bones of the cervical loading during the neutral zone so what how much of force is loading when the cervical vertebral column is in neutral zone that we will be discussing here and first before understanding the amount of force uh, loaded on the cervical vertebral column let us understand what is neutral zone. It is the arc of motion that is available around the neutral position without passive resistance to motion. 
so the amount of movement that is available in neutral zone that is without any passive resistance to the motion is fle flexion of 10 degree extension of 10 degree side flexion of 10 degree and 35 degree of rotation which is the approximate uh, range of motion for neutral zone so at this neutral zone how much of force is been loaded to the cervical column so during upright position the vertebral loading is by the weight of the head which loads about 37.4 newton and other loading is by muscle contraction to maintain the head in upright position which is about 70 newton at atlanto occipital joint which has been recorded and 130 newton at c71 joint coming to the type of lever what type of lever system does the uh, cervical vertebral column follow it follows first order lever where the weight is the head or the skull the fulcrum is the joint for example let's take the c71 epiphyseal joint as an example and the effort is contraction by the muscle you can see in the diagram the weight is the head or the skull then the fulcrum is the epiphyseal joint or the facet joint and the effort is by the extensor muscles so the fulcrum is between the weight and the effort so it is a first order lever now coming to trabecular system there are spongy type of bone in the vertebral column as well as the cortical type of bone the spongy type of bone are more uh, inside the vertebral body and the spine whereas the cortical bones are in the pedicle and the lamina so this type of system is present to reduce the weight of the body as well as to prevent the comp compressive loading distractive loading or the torque so the compressive loading is transmitted from one vertebra to another by two pathway that is cortical cell and the cancellous score the body consists of the epiphyse uh, spongy bone whereas the arc or the pedicle or lamina consists of more of cortical bone the trabecular system are of three types that is the pillars it is also called as the pillars the trabecular system it is vertical superior oblique and inferior oblique you can see the first picture here it shows the vertical alignment of the cortical uh, sorry cancellous bone or the trabecular system the superior oblique and inferior oblique you can see in this second picture superior oblique and inferior oblique so this three type of trabecular system are present Vertically directed uh, trabecular system supports the compressive force and helps to sustain body weight. So it it prevents the compressive force. Whereas the superior oblique and the inferior oblique type of trabecular system resists the bending and tensile force that occurs at the pedicle and the spinous process. Coming to dynamic loading of the cervical spine that is during flexion during extension during side flexion rotation etc but we will be discussing mainly for the flexion and extension to understand the forces so during flexion there will be compressive force at the anterior part of the vertebral body and the intervertebral disc and there will be distractive force posteriorly on the epiphyseal joint and the spines of the vertebral column so when we go for flexion there will be more force that is uh, there will be more compressive force that is generated anteriorly on the vertebral disc and the vertebral body whereas there will be distractive force posteriorly on the epiphyseal joint and the spines during extension it is just opposite there will be distractive force anteriorly uh, that is at the vertebral body and the intervertebral disc and there will be compressive force posteriorly at the epiphyseal joint and the spinous process
coming to forces generated by the muscles to create movement so the movement that is created is flexion by flexors so what are the muscles responsible for flexion number one it is sternocleidomastoid its attachments is inferiorly to the clavicle sternum and superiorly in mastoid process second muscle responsible for flexion is rectus capitis anterior which is responsible for flexion of the atlanto occipital joint it originates from the transverse process of atlas and inserts to the inferior surface of occiput anteriorly another strong flexure is the scalene anterior which comes from the anterior tubercle of the transverse process of c3 to c6 and gets inserted to the scalene tubercle on superior aspect of first rib next flexors are the longus coli which is the deep flexors coming from the uh, anterior aspect of the vertebral body anterior tubercle of the transverse process and next is longus capitis which also comes from the anterior tubercle of the transverse process and moves upward until the atlas now the extensors of the vertebral column are the upper trapezius which we know the origin insertion it comes from the external occipital protuberance medial third of the superior nuchal line the ligamentum nuchae and the spinous process of c7 it gets inserted to the lateral third of the clavicle and medial aspect of the acromion process of scapula so it is responsible for creating extension next one is rectus capitis posterior which is a small muscle which creates extension at the atlanto occipital joint it comes from the spinous process of the axis and gets inserted to the lateral half of the inferior nuchal line other extensors are the erector spinae, which consist of iliocostalis services, longissimus services, longissimus capitis, spinalis services, spinalis capitis, and the uh, semi spinalis capitis and semi spinalis services are other extensors. Lateral flex flexors are erector spinae, rectus capitis lateralis, scalini. Uh, sacrospinous, spelineus capitis and spelineus services and sternocleidomastoid. Rotators are multifidus, semispinalis capitis and semispinalis services and erector spinae. So these are some of the muscles which are responsible for creating movement at cervical vertebral column.